So uh, basically, I'm going to uh, to describe two uh, two prototypes for doing um, remixing and upmixing of musical audio using source separation. And so I'll first uh, introduce uh, a little bit the general technique, which you, you already heard. It's very similar to, to what Stelius uh, just presented. And and then I'm going to talk about each of the prototypes and hopefully demo one of them. So this is, uh, work is done in the context of a project uh, funded by um, EPSRC. It's a three, probably three year project. Uh, uh, the, the project leader is Mark Plumley, and most on a daily basis is um, Emmett Grace, Andrew Simpson and me. And we also have uh, some people from the Institute of Sound Recording at Surrey, um, Chris Commerson and Rosan Mason coming regularly. And basically the general trend in audio source separation, I think there's been a bit of a shift um, towards uh, using more prior information. So in the past it was uh, more typically thought as a blind source separation problem where you could use um, the fact that you have, if you have multiple microphones, then you can use some linear techniques to uh, do blind separation, right? But um, now trying to tackle the more difficult problems of you know, stereo and mono recordings with many instruments, um, people are using more and more um, supervised methods and prior information. And another change that is happening is that the evaluation campaigns that is uh, uh, something that is done every year to compare algorithms they, they also shifted, um, shifted towards um, using, uh, instead of trying to uh, tweak algorithms for a single song and, and kind of adapt to one song and do the best possible uh, separation, try to uh, have algorithms that can deal with uh, 50 songs or, or train on 50 and read on 50 songs. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the, gen the, general, the general technique uh, is usually based on time frequency masking, um, as you already saw. Uh, so that means we hope that um, the sounds won't overlap too much in uh, time and frequency. And then we apply these kind of masks, uh, binary masks. So I one uh, when the, the, in the time frequency pins correspond to the wanted source, to the, the target sound, and zero otherwise. And soft masks are the generalized um, VNR filtering that uh, Stelianos was talking about. So this should be an example of that, of a binary mask. It was another lonely night Spent following the moon's guiding light Looking for something or someone to argue So, uh, yeah, you couldn't hear it very well here, but the point was that um, this is the ideal mask. So we compute this one with um, having the original sources, and it already has some artifacts. And the problem is, um, so this was separating the vocals from uh, mixture with guitar. The problem is if you make mistakes in this kind of mask, then the artifacts become very bad. Um, so this is an example of a soft mask. It was another lonely night Spent following the moon's guiding light Looking for something or someone to... So you can hear that there's a bit more of the guitar in the background. It's still the ideal one. Uh, and it's already not perfect, but the thing is, if you make mistakes with this kind of mask, uh, the result still sounds reasonable. Um, so uh, the, the technique that we're using, also I think most people are either either doing deep neural networks or thinking about it. Uh, so this is more like a mainstream approach, I would say. It's a typical fully connected uh, neural network with a few uh, hidden layers. We play with one to three hidden layers, uh, sigmoid activation functions. And we give it a spectral frame, sometimes with a context like the previous and the next frame. And we hope that it will learn to predict one of these masks. So the output is the ratio or the binary mask. Um, so I'm going to show a little bit the uh, uh, application of this to remixing audio. So the idea of remixing is to make one of the instruments louder or, 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 or smoother than the rest. And here we're using this data set from CSEC challenge, which um, in order to do this, this idea of uh, playing with many songs, they, they came up with this idea of um, general, uh, general uh, instrument categories that kind of work for uh, pop popular music, like vocals, drums, bass, and other. Other normally is, um, is guitar or keyboards most of the time. Um, so I'm going to some water.
So in this case, we use one neural network to learn uh, to separate each instrument separately. And here, the technology, the implementation was all, uh, also experimenting with uh, web audio. So it means that basically all of it uh, is implemented in JavaScript. So I'm not going to go into the detail. And as I said, it was one DNN for each instrument. And then uh, we were using a binary mask um, because we, instead of using the mask to multiply the spectrogram, in this case, we're using it, we're seeing it as a classification prediction. So for each time frequency beam, uh, we're using the mask to tell us if that time frequency beam corresponds to a, some drum instrument or some uh, bass or some vocals. And yeah, the training uh, was done using this, um, this framework called Confident JS, which is quite cool. So we, we could keep everything in, uh, in a web environment or using Node.js in this case. So, um, so this runs in real time. Uh, the, the training, of course, is done uh, offline. And then the prediction is real time in a short time prediction form a context. And then uh, we do one prediction for each model. And then we take um, the predictions of each model as a kind of hint about what instrument this time frequency beam corresponds. But then instead of doing anything with it, we let the user modify the volume of each instrument and therefore scale the time frequency beam that we classified. And then we have like a general threshold slider that says, well, if the probability, we treat it as probability, it's not really probability, it's the output of a sigmoid. Uh, but if it's below a certain threshold, we just ignore and don't, don't deal with this, um, with this time frequency beam. So let's see if I can get it to work. Oh, um, Bit of a problem with the resolution, but so this is a web demo, and I'm going to try to remix a little bit. So you can see I have sliders for drums. So I can make the drums low there, or the bass. Uh, for the vocals, it doesn't work so well in this song. Okay, so you get the idea. Back to the presentation. So, so then uh, we tried to do a similar thing for upmixing. So upmixing means um, take a stereo content, a mono or stereo content, and play it in a surround sound system. Uh, in this case, it was a 22.2 uh, system. Using the same data set, so using the same uh, instrument categories that I just described. And in this case, we found that um, this idea of using multiple models didn't really work. It produced many uh, special artifacts, things that were moving very quickly uh, around speakers. But instead, using a single model that would predict four soft masks in, from the final layer, this uh, created very con convincing results. I'm, I'm not going to be able to, to demo it. Um, so I hope you believe me. Uh, in this case, the technological contract context was um, a neighbor project called uh, S3A, Special Audio for the Home. It's a big uh, EPSRC funded project, collaboration between several universities and, and private entities. And, and they're basically uh, doing research in special audio. So they develop an um, object-based uh, specialization engine. Uh, so object-based means that in this case uh, that we can give it a track for different instruments and tell it uh, where in space we want to, these instruments to, to be. So it's a bit of a black box for us. So I know it's, it works, um, it uses a VWAP uh, specialization. And it has like a um, basically a UDP interface. So we put an open source control interface on top of it. And so we're able to play with it. And so in this case, uh, as I said, there's one large neural network that, um, that produces the four masks uh, and soft masks. And in this case, the uh, training is using a stochastic gradient descent with um, early stopping and some, some features that we added. And and so here, the way it works is uh, we, we do the extraction offline. So we get some estimates of the 
of the tracks corresponding to different instruments. And then in the listening session, we play this in sync. We plug them into the, um, into the specialization engine. And then uh, we use a mobile uh, interface to tell it uh, where in space uh, will its instrument be. So this, the space in this case, we mapped it into a kind of um, 2D plane in front of you. Um, so here's a bit of a diagram. Uh, and the, the surprising fact is that it worked. Um, so if you went very close to one uh, speaker, you could notice that there was something going on. But if you sat more or less in the middle of the room or around the middle, you would perceive a good mixture of everything. And as, as long as the spectrum was good enough that you could move most of the energy of, some, of one instrument somewhere, the perception would be that the instrument comes from there, roughly. So it's not, like our perception is not so picky in this case. And so this basically works. So I'm going to conclude. Um, so the idea was uh, that uh, so the current techniques that we have for source separation, they don't give uh, perfect results for separation. It may be that they won't give perfect results for a long time. I will show you that in the ideal case, it may be better to use the soft mask, which already has some leakage from interference sources. So uh, we can already use these tools in this space that goes from non-perfect to almost perfect for aggregation like the mixing and of mixing. And here, basically, the difficulty, uh, so that the, the well this performance depends on the difficulty of the mixture. So if the mixture has more instruments, if it's more complex, it's going to get, get more difficult. So what we need to do is to provide tools that can adapt to this somehow. So uh, I'll really show you a little bit uh, the mixing interface where, um, so basically, if there was this control that, um, Originally, we thought it worked because of the other category, which we didn't try to model, but it also works very well to adapting uh, to the difficulty of the mixture. So, um, that could work for uh, like more experienced users, let's say, and for uh, novice users, uh, for I mean, non-expert users or like consumers, uh, you could use interfaces that are more like limited. So, for example, in the in the up mixing uh, interface. Some people ask, can I listen to the original, to extracted sources? And luckily they couldn't, because if, if you could, then you, the spell would be broken. But by not having this feature, you could play with something that can, seems to work. Um, so that's, that's the end of the talk, and thank you for listening.